Now, this is a, a little bit of a hypothetical, but, it, you know, it's a look into the future. That's what we've been doing when there's no live sports. So let's discuss the Pac-12 and recruiting going forward. My question to you is, could the Pac-12, at least in college football, benefit from the current situation that we are in with the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, the reason I ask this question, defensive tackle Corey Foreman, number one player in the upcoming recruiting class, decommitted from Clemson a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, it, it's kind of a big deal because Clemson doesn't get a lot of decommits. But it's the first of many that, we think we will see going forward, at least some of the, the recruiting gurus, the guys at 247 Sports, etc. It's the first of many that we're going to see in the past, just in the last like five years or so. The Pac-12, USC, Oregon, etc., they have started losing kids to the East Coast, to SEC schools like Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, etc., the, the big boys. And they're getting, you know, top 10, top 20 players out of California to go to school in the southeast and, and just on the east, right? With this pandemic and the way that things may change going forward, people may not be as interested in leaving uh, or, or going so far away from home that they couldn't get back, right? Uh, ben jumps in. He tosses in dollar signs already. It, yeah. Another reason I bring this up, there's an ESPN article today about USC and how they plan to, uh, quote, take back the West. Uh you know, I'm I'm curious if, if the Pac-12, you know, if the boosters have money, Oregon, USC, etc., if they've got money and and they can get these kids to play there, then yeah, obviously money is a big thing. But does the pandemic change anything for you, Chris? Do you think going forward that we're going to see any changes? Uh, all right, going forward or this year, those are two different things. Well, because this I think year, the pandemic so, could affect this year. Could it affect 2021? That going forward. Next year's recruiting class will have any effect on this thing if we get this thing licked and beaten and we move on with normal life, you know, by, you know, Christmas or whenever it is. So you don't think that it changes uh, just the Long way that term, life is like done? like five years, we're going to look back and say the pandemic's the reason USC's back? That's, I mean, it's a, it's a question. That's why I'm no, bringing it up. The answer to that is no. C can it affect this year? Yes. Okay, so you, because, you think because it's only... I don't think coaches are going to be able to travel. I don't forget the coaches. I don't think the kids are going to be able to travel the way they normally travel to look at schools. I don't think mom and daddy are going to want them to travel that far to look for schools. And if they are all coming from that area, then that is fine. And and I do think that more kids will stay home. So yes, do I think in two years any kids going to give a damn about this at all and stay home? Absolutely not. Uh, you, you may have a point there, That's a, which is why I brought this up. You know, there's uh, there's the whole campaign of Take Back the West that USC has adopted here recently, and it, it does make me question. If they want to take back the West, they got to break out the money, and that's that. Well, we, yeah. we know that. And we that's know what how ben, this works. That's what Ben said. Uh, Matt you have, in. Ben's exactly right. You have NFL rosters, and you have yeah. NFL paydays in the SEC, and that's just the way it is. There's no Ohio salary State, cap Clemson, in college football. <laughs> no, there is no salary cap, and it's all d done under cover of darkness. Yeah. On YouTube, Matt said, I uh, think that it could also be that these kids may lean toward a political side, and the West Coast is different than some of the schools in the South and Southeast. Eh, I don't know about all that. I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking like 17-year-old kids. I don't, I don't know about that. I think some of them might do that, but I think for the most part, look, while all of these are super Republican states that are really good at football, I, very few of these kids could care less about that. They're not yeah. Republicans, and they're not running away from them. The damn sure are not scared of them. No, you got that they're right. They're gods there. They're worshiped there. So why would they be afraid of them? You got it. Uh, Michael on Twitch said there will never be a lack of people wanting to leave California. That is 100% the truth. And then, I don't uh, know. I think, those are, I think that's older people. I don't think that's younger people. Yeah. I don't think the kids have any problems with any of the uh, restrictions of, of – California. That is a that Truth. is a red tape thing that you deal with as an adult, but not as an 18, 19, 20 year old child. I, well, or or 17 kid. years old when, you know, when you're trying to make that oh, decision. Oh, 17, you're not dealing with any of it yeah. at all. Uh, McKinnon said, hell, I'm sure the parents are large proponents of kids staying closer to home in case emergencies happen like we are seeing today. 
Big reason why I chose Memphis over other shooting schools. I might have a dash of paranoia, but always have a plan to get back to the Ozarks if some crazy shit happens. And I think this pandemic will make more people think along those lines. I do think there will be some people that it will affect. It's not going to be I, I a ton. I don't, I don't think three years from now anybody will be affected by it. That's, at I, all. I do worry about about this generation and, and how we are today. I don't feel like I don't feel like we learn from the past as well as we used to. Does that make sense? Like I, I don't know what there is to learn from. What are you talking about? Well, I'm d- not not necessarily anything specific. I'm just talking about we, as a society, we just dive into things without really. At, this is a very broad brush I'm painting. Maybe I don't need to well, talk. Now, about I, I need to know what you're talking about. Well, I don't have. I don't when have it comes specifics. to recruiting, if you're making an analogy from something else, and tell us about it. But no, if no, no. You're it, like, like talking about recruiting, I, I don't. I don't. I, we just. I just don't agree. We're not just talking about the pandemic in general, right? We've had all these things happen before, and yet the uh, the the office of the president, you know, shut off all of the funding for our uh, our disease whatever stuff back in 2017, right? So that was one of the things that he initially cut funding for, and then we have this happen. Like, there were people that wrote articles about how if something were to happen like this pandemic, this is where we would be in trouble, and here's how it would happen. And I wouldn't, I mean, I'll be damned if it didn't happen to a T. So, yeah, you know, like, not learning from the past is, you know, I don't know. I, I personally... Like, my daughter's talking about going out to school in California or whatever. I would like that she stays closer to home uh, because of stuff like this. But, you know, I mean, in, there, in two years, I, three I will years, tell you this. there is nowhere in the world that my child could be that I don't feel like I could get to them. Right now, in the midst of the pandemic, if my kid was in California, I could get to her. I just could. I yeah, just, no, I true. just could. I'm not. I'm not worried about not being able to get them home. I could make that happen. Yeah, no, you're right. As long as they are not held hostage, and I'm not physically able to get to them because a litany of army is in front of me, and I'm just one person. Then, 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 no. There's nowhere they can be if I know where they are that I don't think I can get to them and get them home. That's a, you. You may have a valid point. Like so long as they're be, not overseas. Like you're stuck in a third world country here. Yeah. Okay. No, no, you're we, right. We got plenty of gas. Our country's not running low on fuel. All right. Hop in the damn car. Drive four days to California like they used to do a long time ago. Grab her ass. Throw her in the car. Drive four days back. Yeah. This isn't hard. We're just used to hopping on a plane to being there in eight hours. That's a, Matt's jumping in here with these conspiracy theories and whatnot. I swear. I swear to God. Uh, Tim Crosby jumps in on Facebook, said, love the show, fellas. Keep it up. We appreciate that, obviously. Uh, but no, always. when it gets back to recruiting, I think, yeah. yes, this year recruiting is going to be drastically different than it used to be. I absolutely believe that. The other schools I think could benefit from that are some of the smaller schools in the SEC. Mississippi produces a metric shit ton of Division One football players that usually goes to Alabama, LSU, Florida, Georgia, Texas A&M. People come into Mississippi and they steal kids every year. 100%. Right? So think about those schools and how it might benefit them. Think about the University of Memphis. How many schools come into Memphis across the country and take kids? And now do they stay home or do they not? Yeah. So it, th- this isn't just USC. We're taking back the West. This is going to affect every hotbed in basketball. Be very, very careful of the next couple of years of the DC area because the DC area has been getting pilfered by Memphis, Kansas, Kentucky, and UNC Duke all day long. If those kids stay home and they go to Georgetown, oh, and they go to Maryland, crazy. that it's going, it's going to get crazy. Yeah. All right, you're going to see teams that you haven't seen in a long time be good, be good. Okay? I mean, we hell, we saw it this year. I mean, you, you yeah. had Dayton, San Diego State. Like, and it, all it, it, was it takes crazy... in basketball, especially, yeah. is one kid to be elite and say, I don't care about the big school. I'm going to stay home. Yeah, you're right about That's that. That's all it takes is a, a world class athlete, especially in basketball, where you only have five players on a court at one time. Yeah. Now, you're uh, one you're guy can, right. can totally change that. So, yeah, I think I think we could absolutely see this affect this year. 
there is a chance, depending on what high school football looks like next year, do it. Because here's the other thing. It's not just parents wanting kids to stay closer and, and all of that and kids wanting to make mama happy. It's relationships with high school coaches. And right now, you know, you can be in Clemson, LSU, Alabama, Ohio State and have good relationships with high school coaches in California, but you're not seeing them a lot right now. And you're not going to see them in a lot yeah. for a while. At, at least but not in person. All those, all those local colleges are, and and that can help push kids where, where you know, they need them to get. Now, you got that right. You got that so, right. So, yeah, I do. But the concept of being 18 years old and going away to college and running away from your family for a couple of years and going crazy, that's not changing, man. That, that's not going anywhere. Kids in Alabama want to get the hell out of Alabama. Kids in California want to get the hell out of California. Yeah. They, they just want to see the world. Everybody who's lived in these bubbles as high school students and under, and now they have this opportunity to go somewhere else. That's not going away. No, Three years from now, when we can travel freely, those kids are going to pack up their shit, and they're going to leave, just like they always have. Yeah, Matt uh, jumped in on YouTube, said, I made that drive to Cali and back uh, from Memphis. Yeah, that's a, that's a long drive. Matt said, some of these kids are dumb. Didn't one pick Clemson because there was a Chick-fil-A on campus, and then he, he went and did the research while we were talking. Said it was Casanova McKenzie that picked Auburn over Clemson because there was a Chick-fil-A on campus. Uh, and then Michael jumped in, well, McKinnon, talking about your uh, drive four days out there and then drive four days back. McKinnon said, hell, Chris, give me a call. We'll be an army of two. My hillbilly ass will make it worthwhile. <laughs> and then Michael said, yeah. uh, California does have Skid Row. It's pretty close to a third world country. So, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I, I see where you're coming from on that. My thought process was more with the parents, but you're right. Like, leaving it up to the kids more so, uh, I think kids are making more of their decisions nowadays than the parents are. And and you're right. You're right. It may Our not change a whole in lot. The South are different. Those those young poor black kids that are getting recruited in the South that are top tier elite play. Now they go where mama tells them to go. I now uh, I'm, some I'm of speaking them. a little yeah. out of pocket here. I don't know that those kids in California are being raised the same way. Okay, I know in Louisiana you go where mama tells you to go. Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama. I know you go where mama tells you to go. They don't even talk to daddy. Nobody recruits daddy anymore in the South. You go where mama tells you to go. Yeah. The only one that was different was Landon Collins. cultures are the same out West. Yeah. So I don't don't know that that's, you know, that's being listened to. I do think those kids, because they grew up in bigger cities, they're able to do far more than we could ever do growing up in a small town that – that they are more independent. They are more free thinking. They are more do more for themselves than we were ever allowed to do. And therefore they're, they're going to depend on their own decision-making more than we do. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You are. That's my logic. I don't know. It could be all wrong. No, I I see where you're coming from. Like I, I I think I agree with you. Um, Michael jumped out and said, there is a completely different culture out here, Chris. Yeah. And, and I'm with you. I just, I don't think, I don't think people are going to remember this time so much in like a year or so. Like when when we get done, you give it a year after everything goes back to normal and people will forget what what happened and how scary it was at first. So that that's where my thought process was is okay, well in in 3 4 years like the parents will remember hey, like it when everything happened, you know, Everybody had to yeah, leave school. Be, those parents aren't going to be thinking that stuff. But I, I think you're right. I, I just, I, I think society's a lot different now. I don't, you know, Ben said Chris is right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can understand it. I can understand it. So I get where you're coming from, and that's why I bring these questions up. I want your perspective on it. You and I think differently a lot of times, but, uh, but you know, we can, uh, we can debate it, and then we can, we can try and win each other over. You won me over with this one. I, I see where you're coming. I appreciate from. it. I'm glad. 